Hello and welcome to Big Story on Channels Television. It's been some weeks since the presidential tax team went to work in line with the directive to restore law and order in the troubled area of Apapa and its environment. The team initially had a two-week time frame to conclude its work. But upon expiry, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaje, who also doubles as the chairman of the team, extended the work period by another two weeks. In keeping faith with the outcomes around that vicinity, we visited again to see the level of progress and work done in that neighborhood. I'm your host, Olu Phillips. Stay tuned. Work is still ongoing in the Apapa Axis as it concerns restoring law and order to the once chaotic environment. For many years, and gradually so, Apapa, one of the metropolitan areas in Lagos, southwest Nigeria, came under heavy traffic conditions occasioned by heavy influx of articulated trucks and tankers. Having trucks heading to the ports area in itself shouldn't be a problem, but what have been noticed is the direct opposite. Many wondered what could be the real reasons. Why is the challenge appearing insurmountable? Why was it persistent? These and more questions bothered the minds of Lagos residents, especially those who live, work, or have businesses to conduct in and around a papa. Last year, when we got to the office, within just two months, we experienced about 27 companies close down, leave a papa to other areas in Lagos. 27 companies under two months. So this is a bad experience. And myself, I can say a lot about the fame pool of this grid law. Uh, during the campaign time, I always go outside for a political meeting. Ikeja and BI where the uh, vice president campaign office located in BI. Sometime I left that office 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, late hours every day. I can't count how many times I get to Ijora Olokpa here before, from Ijora Olokpa to my house in Abapa is I think less than three kilometers. Sometimes it took me three hours, two hours. There was a day I get to Abapa, uh, Ijora Olokpa, quarter to 12, but before I get in my house, it was around four o'clock, 4 a.m. And I have another meeting in Ikeja by 9 a.m. in the morning. The spillover could be seen and consistently so in other parts of the state. For the records, the nation's premier seaport is located in that vicinity. Tinkan Island port is also located on that axis. So is that a big deal, you ask? Not a problem at all. The two ports in Apapa simply became merchants' choice for imports and exports of dry and wet cargoes. By extension, it meant there are more to deal with than could possibly be the capacity of the terminal operators. There are two major road arteries leading to the two ports. The Osho de Apapa Expressway, a six-lane highway, and the Apapa Wharf linked through Ikorudu Road, Finshaw Williams Avenue, Ijara, and the Wharf Road. Daily, these roads are besieged by these heavy-duty vehicles heading to the port of the numerous oil tank farms in same axis. So what exactly are the problems? These container-laden trucks inbound a papa area are mostly empties returning to the ports after delivering their goods. A smaller percentage of them, however, are laden with export goods. By the sheer number of empty containers being returned, operations at the terminal do not seem to be commensurate to the numbers, resulting into gridlock. <laughs> We are a victim of circumstance. 
those are the causes they are the result of the shipping company for failing to provide holding bill for receiving their empty containers. We are at the receiving end because we are assigned to go and discharge the contents of the container and bring back the container. Failing to bring it within this uh, period, some period of time, we are, we are, we are asked to pay the mortgage. And every could pay uh, sleep in our truck after that period of that day. A 20 container feet, we paid 12,500. And 40 feet is 24,000 for a day. So I think it's the cause by, caused by the shipping company. A terminal will stop operation. Tactically, attending to the other base school that they are discharging because they don't want to pay demorage in dollars. And now they deny you access and now they are charging you. And in the other aspects, if you can look it within, during that time when they say there is any public holiday, the road will be free. But the moment they came, uh, the people resume work. Instead of them to now continue with full operation and arrangement, they will now create artificial bottlenecks for the team, the gridlock to be hooked so that they can be able to have to extort. That is the people at the, on the road issue. But the other big cartels, they know where they do it. Within, they deny you, they, they will be attending to the vessel allow you, they will smart and they will say their server. If their server fails, why can't they use manual, manual uh, re -re registers for them to accommodate? I, I, you get me? And another aspect is that when you come maybe approaching to the gate, after spending all these days, as you reach, approach the gate, they will say this container is not entering because the shipping company are in third party arrangement with the terminal operator. The shipping company will tell, don't receive our container or they don't have space for that. Then where are you carrying it to? They didn't provide the... All this was happening. That is all what is happening. They will say this container is not allowed to enter. After spending days, then that is why you see some of the drivers hanging. That is where they will have sleep, uh, duplicate and whatsoever. They cannot even see their family for days. So it's not, a, it's not the fault of the drivers technically, because we see that they are callous, they just park and they move away. Excuse me, you know this transportation is about turnover. The more you discharge and come, the more you earn more. If you cannot, even the allowance they give to you, more especially so many of our apart from uh, allowance or so, uh, other allowance, or not, they, some percentage, whatever they give to you, it will go, you will even go for borrowing. You know, during that time, some of the drivers do come with stuff so that the little money they have so that they can economize, economize the cook there. On the road. On the road. Top on the list of efforts at curbing the menace is by way of the presidential directive, which had a two-week period. That working term have since elapsed. But the good news is the extension by another two weeks given to the tax team to perhaps consolidate on gains made. The extension basically is to complete the work ongoing at the Jinkan port to Metro Axis. It has nothing to do with the upper power of Axis. We completed this two weeks within the timeline. The Metro Axis had issues because of uh, palliatives going on. Liverpool Road is closed, Creek Road is closed. The trailer park, the truck park that we needed to do a job, as at that time, was not available and is still not available as of today. And what that means is that the job cannot be completely closed. Two, we also have uh, sections of the road with big portals where the drivers are not ready to pass through and we uh, appeal to the contractor on, on site to make it so he, he, he requested for an evacuation of complete uh, entire stretch of the road and we evacuated about two kilometers of road on both sides and what people need to do is to visit that area. So far we have managed from uh, Tinkan Port to Beach land estate that is what they call sunrise and the contractors has commenced the 
rehabilitation or reconstruction of the road. I saw concrete being laid on that road today, at, at least the first set of palliative. We were not helped at all by the rains. For almost five days, we had rains, and uh, we couldn't accomplish what we needed to do in uh, that axis. So that axis remains work in progress. So the two weeks was meant to address. As far as this uh, port axis was, uh, is concerned, we, we actually completed the assignment. So the extension, uh, you see, the initial timing was two weeks, and people were asking, can it be done in two weeks? So I believe in the wisdom of the presidency. They chose that strategy to make it two weeks plus two weeks. In the course of executing the job of salvage in Apapa, the tax team were guided by the following mandate, which reads in parts, to restore law and order to the area within two weeks, development of an efficient and effective management plan for the entire port area traffic, including the cargo, fuel distribution, and business district traffic, enforcing the permanent removal of all stationary trucks on the highway, the development of an effective manual truck call-up system, pending the introduction of the electronic truck call-up system. It also includes the implementation of a workable empty container return and export container truck handling policy, amongst others. Let us attempt to peep into the work terms and results achieved. On the restoration of law and order, here are some sights and sounds. In developing an efficient and effective management plan for the entire port area, the tax team says engagements are still ongoing. But what we have done in the last um, three weeks, I must tell you, is sustainable, is the right thing to do. And it was done in 2011, if you can recall. The same thing was done 2011, 2012, and it was sustained up to 2015. So what we are appealing to people is, the first thing we did was to restore law and order. Once there is respect for the rule of law, everybody does things in accordance with it with existing rules and regulations. There won't be any issue. And that simple issue helped us. We have also removed, there's no need for extortion anymore. There's no need for you to pay anybody to get to the port. As long as you can find your way to Lily Pond or to any of the 33 parks, people are talking about big truck park. We are able to identify 33 spots where we, believe, where we know as of today about 2,000 floors can be kept. We have the Abad Park in Orile. We have the Wet Sand Park, also in Orile Gomu, and all around here we have various parks. Dangote has one at Ijora, and so many other companies also have parks down there less than two kilometers from here at Ijora. So we have taken advantage of all these small, small parks, and we have a capacity of about 2,000 spaces where people are going. So from there we call them into Lily Pond, and from Lily Pond they are called into the port. So we have worked with MPA to develop, even though it is manual, because there is expected to be an electronic call-up system anytime from the end of August to September, because it's currently at the last stage of procurement. So even though it is manual, we made it to be transparent, and major stakeholders were part of the implementation. And these are the things, surely speaking, is the restoration of law and order, the engagement of stakeholders, and the deployment of the traffic management system that is working. On the next point rests the pivot that will support the maintenance of law and order, and that is the development of an effective manual truck call-up system pending the introduction of the electronic call-up system. The manual specimen is already in use. Trucks approaching the port through rough are accommodated in parks around the vicinity and then moved in batches to the Lilipon Truck Park, where the manual call-up system is applied to enable them approach the port only when called up. If they are, if they are taking up solution one, it's for the federal, uh, the federal government to confer the shipping company, holding them outside the port for receiving their empty boxes. Eh? For receiving their empty boxes. And now, like for instance, when they say now Lily Pond is as a truck park, if the place would accommodate less as 1,000 trucks, then it's equivalent that they can receive was 7,000 boxes of empty containers, which means if we have 7,000 trucks uh, on the line, it, yeah, it, it will accommodate that one at once. So if you are looking for solution one, the roads, the contractor is there, but the palliative, they need to speed, it, speed up of the palliative. And we also need to, be, to have a rescue team 
within that axis. Stand by. Stand by. 24 hours stand by within that axis. And we still now plead that the government should please make open the new Tinkan truck park for the use of truckers so that it can reduce the pressure on the road so that the contractor will have even access to continue with his work. The port and the maritime economy in Nigeria is either number two or number three if you remove the diaspora economy. So you remove a papa from Nigeria's economy, Nigeria goes into recession. So the first person to own this is the Nigerian people and the federal government. One, two, then the Lagos state government and the Lagos citizens and the agencies of Lagos state government. Very soon you are going to see a lot of activities from Loma is already on ground, cleaning under the bridges. The tax force too have been on ground. Lakset, Lagos State Security, they've also been on ground, cleaning some of the areas. Then we need, by the time many of these agencies complete their own restoration program, it will be on that. Then the next person will be MPA, the major landlord, the shippers council, the council for freight forwarders in Nigeria. Then the freight forwarders themselves, I mean the licensed custom agents. Then the truckers, those are the people who engage the truckers. Then the truckers, the fleet operators, and more importantly, the residents of Apapa, who I believe they are the people that should tell us what they want from them. On helping to assuage trucks not to hit the road indiscriminately for fear of incurring damages, the tax team is to implement a workable empty container return and export container truck handling policy, among others. We also understand some concessions have been made in that regard. You issue delivery orders to containers. You never know when they will come. So you see a situation where 2,000 containers show up at a time, and your capacity is 500. There's little that can be done. They will only attend to the 500. So the stopgap is the trailer transit park. So those who cannot be handled, we keep at the trailer transit park. We also add engagement with the freight forwarders. They complain about demolition. All these are known to government. And they felt if we could, and government has gotten them something of respite in that regard, even though not exactly what they wanted. So for the terminal operators, there are so many of them. Some deal with manufacturing concerns, some will deal with bulk goods, some will deal with um, general purpose goods. But by and large, I think MPA and the Shippers Council will deal appropriately with that. Those are port-related operations. While so much have been seen in terms of sanity at the wharf end of Apapa, the Osho de Apapa Expressway has kept the team on their feet daily. Today, after much pressure, we've put on the authorities, we are beginning to see some semblance of repair, some semblance of attention to this six-lane road that was allowed to deteriorate unnecessarily. And, and, and something that is very instructive, if you look at the road very critically, you will see that this road actually exists. The road was constructed in the last administration uh, with paved stones and with um, cement and not necessarily um, asphalt. But because the drains were misused, blocked, and all of that, what we had, blocked drains, water flowing on top of the road, making it look like the road was impassable. But after the 48 hours ultimatum to close this road, to allow for repair work, this is what we see. We see a clear road and we can see all the way to Sunrise Bus Stop. That tells you that uh, it was a total case of neglect that happened here on the road. And you can imagine that people and vehicles and articulated trucks leaving the Tinkan Island port and heading out of the Tinkan Island port had to return to Wharf to use the single two lanes there rather than use the six lane. Let's hope that this construction and reconstruction going on here, palliative going on um, to make sure that the road is motorable can be done in quick and good time so that we can recover this national asset that is aligned to waste in terms of infrastructure. This six lane 
Oshida Papa Expressway. It's a duty that has to be done, and all authorities that need to do this should really come on board and do what they need to do as quickly and as promptly as the urgency requires. This as, uh, access is now free, but the other access it is very terrible because of the state of the roads. Apart from the set of road, they have already asked, have been saying that they will open the second gate trailer park to complement the lily pond. But up till now, it's not. If they are, if they are taking up solution one, it's for the federal, uh, the federal government to confer the shipping company to have holding them outside the port for receiving their empty boxes. Eh? For receiving their empty boxes. And now, like for instance, when they say now lily pond, it's as a truck park. If the place would accommodate less as 1,000 trucks, then it's equivalent that they can receive 7,000 boxes of empty containers, which means if we have 7,000 trucks on the line, it, yeah, it, it will accommodate it at once. So if we are looking for solution one, the roads, the contractor is there, but the palliative, they need to speed, it, speed up of the palliative. And we also needs to be to have a rescue team within that axis stand by stand by 24 hours stand by within that axis and we still now plead that the government should please mark open the new tinker truck park for the use of truckers so that it can reduce the pressure on the road so that the contractor will have even access to continue with support Enforcing law and order has unveiled glaring level of disrepair and damages on this road. Truckers who must use this asset to think and port do not have the complement of the entire six lane of the highway. In the last quarter of 2018, in an elaborate ceremony, this road was flagged off for reconstruction, but so far, nothing significant meets the eye. You would expect that at a critical time as this, there should have been massive deployment of man and machine to this stretch that constantly impedes truck movement. For straight efforts at keeping the trucks in check, as many of them wouldn't risk plying the damaged portions. A situation where only two or three machines are on site are indicative, at the very best, a palliative measure. When, when you travel, you come back uh, from airport, you call a taxi man to, uh, to pick you from airport to Apapa. If you see who will go, they will charge you 15,000 naira, 10,000 naira a time. It's not that because of they want the money. They just want you to leave them, let them, let them give another customer that will go to another area, not to Apapa. <laughs> and you can't, you can't blame them. Because so with the price, they chase you away. They want to chase you away with the price. Yes, because of they don't want to come to the area. The price will chase you away. If you say you pay some, you say, oh God, I can't go to that area. <laughs> Please get another person. Some will just carry you and come through their way. Sometimes when we get uh, Ijora or uh, Marine Beach there, you have to use Okada. Whoever you are, you have to use Okada to your destination. There's no mistake in this. Recovering the Osho Papa Highway, especially between Mile 2 and Tinkan, remains a critical variable to restoring order on this axis. Years of neglect has impacted on the state of infrastructure, which must be recovered also if the efforts of the tax team must be sustained. Slowly but surely, one brick at a time, restoration seems to be happening around that vicinity. I hate to be a skeptic, but like many still ask, will this be the very last attempt at restoring a papa to his days of glory? I want that to happen. We all want that to happen. And supposedly, that's the mindset of the current team. From all of us here, it's bye for now.